one, we're going on a camp trip, and two, it's Mohawk time. Come on, let's. Right, brother boy, let's go. Right, swing around. Let's go. Right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's get this Mohawk going. Right, move over. Job done. Let's go camping. See ya, butlers. Lockdown's back. We've got to go home. And we're very angry and we have to stay at home for the whole holidays. Ah. <sighs> we just had some terrible news. We're 10 minutes away from our four hour destination and there's a lockdown called at 6 p.m. which is in about three and a half hours for us so we've got to turn around and we've Drive got to go all, all the way, way home. Back. A week long camping trip four we didn't hours. even get there and we're all packed up we're all gearing to go not this time butler boy oh well we'll see you guys another time lockdown's back covid's back we love it so I just turned round, oh, it's not a good feeling almost getting to the campground and having to swing it round and start heading all the way home again. So we've got car full of gear, fridge full yeah. of food. So we thought, well, we still, we're still we in lockdown for two weeks so we're not gonna go anywhere, but why don't we just set up the camp, have a in camp the in, the ca in the garden? Yeah, actually, let's do the bar review. Yeah, jumping idea. We said a couple of episodes ago we were going to do a review on, on Bob, that bug out bag. Let's do that, and in that, uh, there's some shelter building gear. So why don't we build a shelter, sleep in that, eat all that food. All's not that bad, so let's yeah. do that. Yeah. And in the meantime, we're going to roll some footage that we shot a few weeks ago with the butler boy doing some surfing. So sit back, enjoy that, and we'll see you on the Bob review. See ya! Shadows way too long. You always thought that you were weak, but babe, you're wrong. Yeah, you better step into the light, just give it a try. Think that it's time you let that spark out. You've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Cause you're a work of art
Yeah, so COVID's back again. It has been away from Australia for quite a while. We've, we've had free rain. We know a lot of you guys have been suffering, so we can't complain too much, but we did a big drive yesterday. We got 10 minutes from our camp spot. All hell broke loose on the COVID front. We had to pretty much swing back, come back, and we're gonna continue the trip in the garden. So here we are. Yep. So seeing as we can't go anywhere, it's probably a good opportunity to talk about Bob, our sort of emergency bag. Right, so what is Bob? Well, Bob, I think, is an American term, so bug out bag. We don't really like that, do we? Yeah. Bug, the term bug, bug out bag. And it comes from those sort of doomsday preppers where they think there's going to be <laughs> the end of the world. <laughs> bug out bag, literally, you can chuck on your back. Ours is too heavy to do that, by the way, but, uh, and then you literally bug out. But uh, we don't like that term, so we've just, uh, we just call it Bob. So there is a, a bit of a backstory about Bob. Um, what, I actually got the idea from one of my friends and I used to riddle him something chronic about having something like this and he knows who he is. Until one day we were, we were on a trip and we, we ended up getting two flat tires at the end of the day and at that point I was thinking, you know what? That bag isn't such a bad idea and it was really, it really evolved from then. So yep. I reckon we take a look and see what's inside it. I don't know about yeah. that. Right, so let's have a look in a bit more detail. We'll start at that end, that's where all the food is. So we'll, we'll start from that end. So I've got three days of food worth for one person. So we've got three breakfasts, which is porridge, and you just have to put hot water. Yep. We've got noodles for lunch. And you'll remember we had the noodles out of this bag. They've been replaced now on one of the other episodes when we went to the glowworm tunnels. Yep, and the rest is just dinner. Yeah, and the dinner is those, do you remember we did a review uh, back when we were at Glenbrook on the MREs, they're essentially, you can eat them as they go. So if you check that episode out, we've reviewed those. They're usually pretty horrible, but they were not too bad actually. Yours was good. Yeah, mine. So what do we have for um, dinner? So we have spaghetti bolognese, we've got chicken italiano, we've got butter chicken, and we've got some chili. So we've got a small mess tin. That's what we used before with the noodles. We've got a small stove to cook them with. Um, you may have remembered a few episodes back at, at Glenbrook where we had the vodka and that's where it came from actually out of Bob, Bob so many uses for vodka but I suppose the adults will understand this if you were in a situation where you needed all this uh, you probably won't have a can with you but it can also be used just for sort of comforting purposes and I'm sure the adults around us will understand what that means so I may as well have some comfort while we're, we're looking at the Bob stuff so probably won't have the coke on that day. So next we've got the shelter building equipment. We've got three tarps. We've got some rope to secure it. We've got some um, pegs to keep it down. And we've got some cable ties. And to make it more comfortable, we have an inflatable pillow. So lastly, we've got the muddy net to keep all the bugs away. So since we're not camping, later on we're going to build a shelter using this gear and sleep in it. Right, so what do we have next? We've got our sort of water equipment. So we've got a couple of collapsible water bottles. We've got another one with some measurements on there if we need to measure water. Um, and most importantly, we've got some water purification tablets. So you just drop these, a certain volume of water will then sterilize the water. Um, we've also got this, life straw which is a really good piece of kit actually this what you do with this 
you, you, you put it in water and it's just a really fine filter so you can just suck it up out of a stream and it filters all the nasties out. So that this is just all sort of for emergency water usage. So this is our Leatherman. It has lots of different tools and you can use it for fishing and other things. And this is our compass, and you can never go wrong with a compass. You always need it when you're outdoors. Yeah, you should never be out anywhere in the bush without a compass. If you get in any trouble, you need to know what direction you've come from and, and where to go to, really. So definitely need, always need to have a compass. It's got a magnifying glass on it as well, so you can use that for lighting a fire. And we've also got my favourite thing in the world, a uh, Gerber from Bear Grylls. It's just like a fold-out knife. You can use it for cooking and stuff. So the other kit, bit of kit we've got is a um, personal locating beacon or an EPIRB is another name for them. So these are really highly recommendable if you spend time like we do in pretty remote spots. So if we're in a really bad situation, really easy to use, you just put the antenna up and if you click that button there, what happens is this transmits up to a satellite which will, uh, tr which will uh, this beacon will show up in the receiving area somewhere in the, in the US and then from then eventually somebody will come and find you so you leave this and and what it does it emits a signal and, and it's on an emergency frequency so it can be found anywhere in the world so if you have one of these you click the button i think it like i think the battery is 24 or 48 hours it will be sending out a, a locating signal and eventually emergency services will come and find you so definitely need one of these if you're doing anything remote out on the sea anything where if you get in hot water you're really going to be on your own you, you really want one of these guys they're, this one was about 300 bucks so they're around 300 dollars i think the battery life is about five years fully submersible waterproof as well so definitely recommended if, if, if you're doing the type of trips that, that the butler boys do right we've got a headlamp uh, with some spare batteries also got uh, this light stick so you snap those in half the chemicals mix and then it glows in the dark for about six to eight hours um, we've got some duct tape very very useful bit bit of equipment to have we can pretty much repair anything with duct tape and then we've got a small um, fishing kit so i'm not going to open it up but it's just if we're near a water body we've got that ability then uh, to fish so in in there there's hooks there's weights just small basic fishing gear we've got some soft plastic so they're really good in australia and then we've got this eBay special, that's our fishing rod actually, it's a collapsible small little rod. Uh, whether it works or not is questionable. Um, and maybe we'll try this actually Butler, and uh, maybe we yeah. give this a review and see if it works. It came from eBay, it's got a small reel that attaches to it. Um, we'll try this out another day to see if it actually works. And then we've got some fishing line, so just basic fishing gear. So these are my fire lighting equipment. So this is just your normal matches. Um, from my previous video, I lit a fire with um, a spark and a knife. Yeah, so that's similar, but that's just the spark lighter on its own. Yep. And we've also got um, some Vaseline and some cotton wool, yeah. and you can light fires with Yeah, that. so what we can do with that, and we'll do that later actually when we light the fire, when, we, when we've made our shelter, but um, you, can, you can kind of make your own fire lighters using a combination of those two. And then we've got these other, they, they're for the MREs actually, they're these heat packs that you, you mix with water and they get really hot and you can actually cook the, the MREs straight in there as well. Yep. And last but not least, we've got waterproof matches. Yeah, so just in case everything goes to, to pear shaped and the bag gets soaking wet, these things will light in wet weather, which is pretty good. Do you want to give a demo? It's not very wet at the moment, but you'll, you'll get the message. There we go. Basically, like it's they they're hard to stop. Yeah, so they burn pretty well. Those those uh, once they you light them, they, and that the idea being that they're good when it, in wet weather. Yep. Right, we'll just go over the last few things. It won't take too long. We've got an axe. Uh, obvious reasons for that for chopping firewood, things like that. We've got a slingshot, so this could be used uh, for hunting or for defence. I've got some a few rounded pebbles for that for, for the ammunition we've got foot, basic first aid kit so we've got some panadol we've got some antihistamine gaviscon tablets savlon hand sanitizer some hydrolytes various other band-aids plasters bandages things like that 
super glue that's always good for for gluing things together and even wounds if you get a deep wound and then i've got some nice toasty clothes so i'll be nice and warm not so much the butler but i'll be warm i've got a beanie a puffer jacket a rainproof jacket and some tactical gloves uh, often if you're going through the bush you, just to protect getting thorns and things in your hands so that's pretty much much it really that's our contents of bob so if we were ever unlucky enough to be in a bob situation the very first golden rule we would do is lay out everything like yeah so we'd lay it out so that we could see really what we've got because i forget what we've got in there so we would do this just to see what tools we've got we hope we never have to ever use it for this purpose but we do find don't we that most trips we'll use something we'll forget something and we've got we we often use a lot of this gear yeah. in isolation of itself but if we were in a, in a in a bob situation i think the golden rules of any survival is first of all is the shelter you've got to build your shelter to get out the elements the next thing you think about is the water so that would be looking for a water source and cleaning it up with the purification tablets and then the third thing is your food so we've got three days worth of food there as we said so yeah this is still have a pretty miserable time it would be definitely more comfortable having the bob yeah so that's it so so we've built the shelter out of bob and now let's check it out so we've got the bottom tarp here we've got our mattress since this is not a real bob situation we're going to use our mattress and we're going to use our sleeping bags so we've got the mozzie net to keep the flies out and the mozzies and we've got the tarps to keep um the rain out and they're both held up with the rope so now we have to light the fire so we've got all the things we're going to need for tonight in this bag out of bob and now we're going to make homemade fire lighters so what you want to do is just dip it in there get a lot on it so it's and then you just put it under a log or just put it somewhere. It's nice and warm though. Yeah. I think it'll be cold later. It's a clear night, so it'll probably be pretty cold in there, Butler. Yeah. Oh, we'll be good. <sighs> it's nice and warm, Butler. Yeah. Right, so dinner dinner wise, we're not gonna eat the uh, MREs, um, just because they're we got what we're gonna do is eat these freeze-dried ones that we've got. So I'm gonna have the Mexican chicky. These are backcountry stuff that you can get from Anaconda or from BCF. What are you going to have, Butler? Um, beef and pasta hot pot. So all you do is you add water, they're dehydrated, so it rehydrates them. They're pretty good eating, actually. So just yeah. have those. Yeah. yeah. I think we're ready. So it there's your hot. beef and ha pasta hot pot. It's, the fire's pretty is good. Is it hot? Yeah. It's a top pot. Yeah. It's covered in vegetables. It's pretty spicy actually. Mine's covered in vegetables. Oh, it's hot. It's not bad. Mine's pretty spicy actually for a me Mexican. It, you're not kidding, it is quite spicy. You wouldn't like it. Yeah, I don't like spice. Mm. You get smoked out here. Mm. Mm. How is it good? It doesn't look good, but it is. Pretty good. Um, maybe something else with it. Yeah, some yeah, maybe some bread. But other than that, pretty good. Yep. I think they're actually better than the MREs. No. No. So we we sort of split on that. I think they're better than the MREs. You don't. Yeah. So we'll leave you to decide. Yep. So we are in the tent, uh, in the shelter, I should say. It's not even a tent. Really. I'm gonna sleep this side. <laughs> We are, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to. It's pretty dark. You probably can't see us. Yeah. It's quite cold, actually, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know how cold it is, but it's quite cold. It'd be, uh, it's probably going to be about five degrees, so it's quite cold. Yep. 
Right. So it's the next morning. It was pretty cold. It was a cold night, but I was warm. How are you? I was pretty warm. No, we didn't get hassled by any possums or anything, which was good. Yeah, but we heard some weird noises. Like, a few, yeah, I think they were bats, there. fruit bats, a few weird noises. Yeah. Other than that, it was all good. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and that's really it for another episode, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed it. It wasn't um, what we had planned. Yeah. But and it, means, it means the most to us if you like. Subscribe and follow on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. It certainly does. So, as the butler said, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you again soon. See you guys. See you guys. This was a good way to end the camping.